Fantastic. Uh, that was Trains to Brazil from uh, Guillemots. And before, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Guillemel. 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 Uh, before that, you heard Co- uh, the Kooks with She Moves in Her Own Way. Yeah, hello. This is Adam and Joe. Welcome to our Saturday morning show. We're here with you for two hours and 50 minutes now until 1 p.m. It's a rubbish day. Like, don't even bother getting out of bed. Seriously. Yeah. It is rubbish. It's horrible. It's sort of drizzly, and uh, it's not freezing cold. That's one good no. thing. No, it is no. Not. it's not too cold. It's an enforced nesting day, listeners. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough to still be in bed, just get wrapped up in the duvet. Yeah. Turn on the <clears> telly. <throat> get yourself in Don't nice. turn on the telly. I think if they turn on the telly, they won't listen to us. No, but they could turn. You silly idiot. Oh, dear. Get out. Get out. I didn't out. think. I didn't think I'm going by. Come back. I was thinking they could turn on the telly and they could watch us on digital. You know? Oh, just watch, like, the blank screen. The blank blue screen. And listen to the audio. Exactly. That's a good idea. Because they could listen to it in surround. Yeah, like in a five kind of point Derek one. You know this show thing. goes out in 5.1. Does it really? Yeah, it does. Is that true? It, it's not true, no. Mm. Um, hey, you know what? In fact, <clears throat> the other day, right, I was buying some... Uh, it's a quick story. I was buying some DVDs in HMV. I was going to get, like, the three for 20 pound thing. Yeah. And I quite fancied buying that amazing French film about 9-11. You know, the two French firemen who were caught in one of the towers? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, because it's the anniversary coming up and That's everything. That's right. Uh, and I picked it up and I had a look at it. And I thought, shall I buy that? It was either that or the Bourne Supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that tasteless? No, it's not tasteless. No, I mean, it was a situation. It's a tough choice. Know, so I thought, 9-11 it's a documentary choice. or the Bourne Supremacy. <laughs> so I flipped them over and I thought, I looked at it because I've just got this new surround sound system at home. Yeah. And I thought, I'm not going to buy 9-11. It's only in stereo. Oh, my goodness. Is that a bad choice to make? Uh, so you were, you were I would have bought it if it had been in 5.1. If they'd done a few explosions mm, in 5.1, mm, yeah. Mm. That, it's tasteless, isn't it? It is a little bit tasteless. But that, that process did go through my brain. Well, you know, Matt Damon probably pops up in the 9-11 thing. Do you think? Maybe, yeah, just to make it more exciting. I'm sure they, they might have reshot some bits with him. Maybe. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, listen, we got an exciting email, didn't we, just now? We did, yeah. Uh, we've got an email. I mean, this t- we, maybe we should talk about it a bit later. Should we tease the email? Yeah, let's tease the email. Oof. We've got an email from a television personality. From a, We're famous, excited. From a famous celebrity. Um, and there's great music coming up. Franz Ferdinand in a second. Soft Cell. We've got Soft Cell coming up in the first hour. Is yeah. that exciting? I don't know if we're going to play that one. I might, right. I might hijack <laughs> that one for a free play. Plus, we've got a uh, crap commentary corner coming up. Are we going to be playing uh, Rock and Reel and Rock and Rubs or Rock and Rubs? Uh, yeah, possibly. I've got to find a copy of the NME. <laughs> right, we'll have a text competition. And what prizes have we got? I think we've got Amando Iannucci's Channel 4 series. Oh, I want to steal to that. To give away. That's, That's great. amazing, that show. Yeah, when that out was... in 2001. It's kind of a lost classic. Well, it went out uh, around the time of the 9-11 attacks. 9-11, correct. And so it was sort of buried beneath the... Um, in fact, it went out just before rubble. my equally buried, but much, much worse talk show I did stupidly on Channel 4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the summer of 2001. Uh, but it's brilliant, so you can win a copy of that on DVD. That's right. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, w- uh, w- you mentioned it before. We're going to talk about it later on, but we're, we're going to be canvassing um, opinion, or rather trying to get help f- to create a new uh, Robbie Williams-style rude box rap. Yeah. We need lots of suggestions for rhymes of, like, modern things, right? Is that right? Yeah, I can't concentrate because scantily clad women have just popped up on my Who's been PC. sending scantily clad women? I don't know, women? they've just appeared. Well, I'm going to have a look at that, but look in the that. meantime... That's a very nice bum. I want to see... Um, hang on, I've got to play some music bum. and then I'll check out the bum. Look at those boobs! Don't do that. This what? is the Young Knives. <laughs> There you go. That's the Young Knives with Weekends and Bleak Days. That's an appropriate song to play on a bleak weekend day. Even though apparently it's gorgeous in stains, says the texter. Yeah. Hey, I was talking to someone about stains yesterday. I was having my hair cut and the guy cutting my hair was saying, I was in stains last weekend. It's really nice. You know? (laughs) Really? Good good convo. Amazing story. No, but don't you think, I was quite surprised because you've got this picture in your head because of Ali G, right? Uh, yeah. Of Staines being kind of horrible. But of course, the whole joke about the Ali G thing was that Staines is really nice middle class uh, area mm. um, with just a nasty sounding name. And it's a very unlikely place for a, uh, uh, a young rapper or urban person. To come Correct. From. Well, maybe we should go live in Staines. Staines is nice. If you're listening in Staines, you're lucky. You've got it. You've got it made. Now, uh, let's read out our email from the famous person. Yeah, now last week you might have heard us being a a little bit derogatory about Channel 4's new youth show, Whatever. 
Yeah, that's true. It's on, what time is it on? 11 o'clock or something? 11 o'clock, yeah. Last night. It's Not a kind of show. late enough. Made by the kids for the kids. Yeah. Presented by 10 young uh, wastrels who are allowed <laughs> to sort of do whatever they want. That's right. Uh, and uh, it's yeah, sort of we setting were being a bit nasty up. about it. We were being nasty because, I mean, we are, uh, you know, I'm I, it just, just makes, jealous. It makes me feel old watching that show. But we got you know? an email that says, Hello, Adam and Joe. Dean Warpole here from whatever. A.K.A. Fat Bloke with Glasses. A friend told me today that you didn't like our show. Very sorry to hear that, but you... Uh, oh, well, I can't read this bit. And then he's flattering about our old show. Uh, but he says, hey, not all whatever was bad. At least it's better than Big Brother. I'll probably get in trouble for sending this. Hugs and kisses, Dean. He were, who was he going to get in trouble from? Uh, the, the production crew of whatever. No, come on. The show's supposed to be about anarchy, letting the kids do whatever. I think it's entirely in keeping that Dean should be able to express... Uh, he, he hasn't put his own show down anyway. He's been, um, absolutely professional. I tell you what we should do. What? We should try and get him on the phone. Dean, will you call in if you're listening, or if anyone knows Dean? Give him a shout, tell him we want to talk to him. We're not going to be horrible at all. It's very nice of you to send that email. But we'd love to chat to you about what it's like doing the show. The making of whatever. And, uh, perhaps you can explain some of it to, um, a confused man in his mid-thirties. I'd really appreciate that. Give us a call, Dean. The number is 0871-222-1049. 0871-222-1049. Right, it's uh, time for our first free play of the day right now. This is Billy Childish's band, The Buff Medways, and this is a uh, Kinks cover called Misty Water. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. One, two, three, That's the Kaiser Chiefs with Modern Way. This is Adam and Joe on XFM, London's 104.9. Coming up in a second, competition time, it's Crap Commentary Corner, the competition where we play your excerpts from a DVD commentary. You call in and tell us uh, what uh, DVD it is off of and who is talking. The number is 0871 222 1049. And this week you can win uh, Amanda Iannucci on DVD. And have we got tickets? Yeah, tickets to see Jet at uh, the Brixton Carling Academy and one pair of tickets to see Richard Ashcroft. That's exciting for someone. Yeah, absolutely. Wembley Arena. Good prizes. Shall we ask people to start sending in uh, Robbie Williams rhymes now? No. No? No, let's not. Why not? Because we could do it later. But yeah, but I'm thinking that we need to accumulate them throughout the show. Okay, let's then. Okay. So last week we played Robbie Williams' new single, Rude Box, an extraordinary song with some amazing up-to-the-minute rhymes. Like, he's got some really topical bits of lyrics in there. Uh, for example, just to remind you, um, <laughs> where is it? Split your kex, sing a song of Semtex. There you go. Pocket full of Jurex, body full of Mandrex. Mandrex, I find out that Mandrex is a cocktail with Baileys in it. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and, uh, here's some more lyrics, where is it? Oh yeah, okay then, check the tan line, make your body shape like you stood on a landmine. Call, call me on my mobile, not the landline, and jack the main line at the same time. Yeah, it's as if he's, like, assembled a focus group to come up with the hippest words in yeah. the contemporary lexicon. Mm -hmm. uh, political words, edgy words. Pop cultural words. He gets a crack in words. at Michael Jackson there. He does, yeah. And, and then he's just assembled these terms into rhyming couplets and constructed a brilliant kind of sub-streets uh, trendy rap song. Yeah, and so we want to do the same thing. And if we get enough good rhyming couplets, modern style rhyming yeah. couplets from you listeners, then we will do our best to rap over the instrumental version of Rudebox at the end of the show. Yeah, we're going to create our own single, our own version of Rudebox, because if he can do it, we can. Yeah. So get texting 83XFM. We're looking for kind of rhyming couplets involving fashionable terminology. We we're got gonna... one last week, didn't we? Google Maps and something? Well, I had uh, Nike Freeze, an yeah. Xbox 360s. That's quite good. And flat screen TVs, they yeah. all rhyme, yeah. right? That's a triplet. Uh, something about, you know, like, YouTube, stray pube. That's all. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to work on some, but we need your uh, contributions as well. We're going to keep asking you for those throughout the show. But coming up in a second uh, is Crap Commentary Corner. First of all, here's some more music. This is The Rapture. Uh, am I insane? That is just Sesame Street, that song, isn't it? Do you think? Yeah. Sunny day. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, that was Get Myself Into It um, by The Rapture. Very good. It was too. This is Adam and Joe here on XFM. And it's competition time. 
It's time to call in. You could win something amazing. Let us begin. Can you guess which film we're playing? By hearing what they're saying. Crap gum and Terry Corner. I haven't used that jingle in a while. Yeah, I, you can hear why. <laughs> uh, it's Crap Commentary Corner. This is the bit where we play you excerpts from a DVD commentary. You have to tell us who's talking and what film they're talking over. This is a pretty easy one. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite Irish actors in the world. Um, so if you know who this is, call 0871 222 1049. 0871 222 1049. And you can win the prize of your choice out of our amazing range of prizes, tickets and DVDs and stuff. Uh, here is clip package number one. It's pretty tough to do this when you've got rubber booties on. Those are my sunglasses. I've had those sunglasses for nearly three years. I decided to wear them in the shot, and I've still got them. <laughs> I, lo I love this scene. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I <yeah. laughs> <laughs> I've never actually heard someone do that. Well, I haven't heard someone do that for a while. Do what? Do that laugh, the Alan Partridge laugh. <laughs> oh. He interesting <laughs> info though, isn't it? Like about the sunglasses. Yeah, he still got them. Yeah, no, he the ones in the film were his. Uh -huh. And he decided he used them in the film. And he did, and, and he still, and got, still them. got them. I mean, next time I watch that movie <laughs> with some friends, I'm going to pause it and tell them that. Yeah. And they'll think I'm his friend. That's right. I mean, I, amazing inside information there. 0871 You know what if I'd you like know to who that is? know what? on the commentary as well? Oh, do they tell you if the legs he's standing on belong to him? They don't know. It would be fascinating to know that, though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. But it is hard to do in little rubber booties. Maybe it is. Right. Yeah. So that's quite easy, that one. I know who that is. I'm not yeah. so sure about the film. Should we have right. another clip? Let's have another clip. This, this is the clip package number two. Here we go. This water was cold. <laughs> Every time we got this suit wet, it would shrink. <laughs> so I'd end up looking like Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> look, look at the pants. <laughs> what can I say about this? We got it before lunch break. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Oh, he just went out in one ear there for a second. That was odd. Sorry, that was my mixing. Um, yeah, that is... It's pretty basic who, who it is. But yeah. What's the film? What's That's the, the question. film? But Some people might not know who it is. No, no. But I'm that sure was another not. interesting nugget, wasn't it? That that scene, they finished it before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my favourite kind oh, of commentary. Wow. Imagine uh, finishing it before lunch. Yeah. I wonder what they had for lunch. And I wonder how what they had for lunch affected that afternoon's filming. That's right. I'd like some kind of a statistical track on a DVD that describes what's in every actor's stomach. Mm-hmm. Decomposing. Well, it could, I mean, that could genuinely affect a performance, you know. Yeah. And uh, for lunch, like I a had big, a... big, heavy burger. I had, yeah, I had a burger. I went for a large bun with sesame seeds. And in the afternoon, my performance was rather sluggish when I hit a bit of a... A tired patch around about 3.30. Mm, mm. It's fascinating stuff. 0871 1049 if you know who that was talking and what film they were talking over. Uh, we will find out if anyone's got it right very shortly. First, here's another free play. This is The Mighty Radiohead. That's Radiohead from Kid A. What's it all about? Everything in its right place. I don't know. What's they going on about? What's it mean? He's got two people in his head talking to him. He's mad. No, two colours. It's colours Two colour, colours in his head. He's a genius. He's got two colours in his head. Um, so people are getting the right actor. Yeah. But the wrong film. Wrong film. Should we play a little refresher clip before we go to the ads? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's hear another clip. So... See if you know, uh, know what film he's talking about. Concentrate on hints about the film. Here we go. Took days to do this sequence. Took months to do the whole thing. But pays off in the end. The magic of it all. It's going to be interesting sitting beside the Queen at Albert Hall in a couple of weeks' time. But I'm sure she... I'm sure she'll like it. <laughs> um, seeing inside the Queen, did he say? Yeah, it'll be interesting sitting inside the Queen <laughs> in the Albert Hall. 
that was just that was deliberately coming out of just one speaker there incidentally was it deliberately yeah no yeah <laughs> no what did i do wrong i don't know um, so it, it's a pretty famous film series uh and if you get that right you can win tickets to see jet at the carling academy or richard ashcroft or a copy of the armando Inucci shows on dvd 0871 1049 if you know call now XFM. <laughs> Very enjoyable. That's the Zootons with Valerie. Did you mean that? Yeah, I really like that song. Did you? Yeah, I wouldn't be ironic about me. No, 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 God no, forbid. No. So, uh, we're playing crap commentary competition. This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's 104.9. We've got a caller a -ca on the line. What reckons they c they've got it right? David. Um, David. Are we supposed to play... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, yeah. yeah I can't, just can't hear myself. Are we supposed to play another jingle? No. Another <laughs> jingle? <laughs> Are we supposed to? <laughs> Why? To know, Do just... you want to? We can if you I want. I know. Do you want to play a jingle? Yeah, play, another, play the, crap, the other crap commentary corner jingle. <laughs> Makes it sound more official. All right, hang on. Uh, <laughs> hold the line, David. We're going to play another jingle. Why do you want to play another I don't know. It just, it's like punctuation. It's like proper radio, you know? <laughs> like other DJs do. It's ne we're never going to be like proper radio, yeah. man. You're right. <laughs> Plus, playing this jingle means we've spun this whole competition out for what, 25 minutes? <laughs> and that's ideal. Oh, brilliant. I wish it was longer. Yeah. David, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here, yeah. Did you enjoy that jingle? Uh, yeah, it was really good. It was what? It was really good. It was really good. Really? Thanks a lot, mate. Um, what, what are you up to, David? Where are you? I'm in Cardiff. In Cardiff? Cardiff, yeah, it's raining. It's raining now, everywhere in the um, UK. Now, you are, you are Welsh? No, I'm Cornish. Are you Cornish? Yeah. Oh, well done. Thank you. Thank well, then I can't talk to you about the Charlotte Church show. Did you see that last night? No, I, I missed it. Ah, uh, but what, by accident or design? Um, by accident. But yeah. if I'd known it was on, it would have been by design. Yeah, you would have missed it. It's not bad, the Charlotte Church. Show. It's not bad. Really? No. No. It's not good. Oh. It's got a lot of it's Welsh, m mystifying Welsh references and jokes and stuff. As if, as if, like, just mentioning the fact that she's Welsh is It's very hip right now, Wales. Enjoyable. Yeah. Glyn, you know, from Big yeah. Brother. Hello, David. Hello. Were you saying something there? Uh, um, I was agreeing. Agreeing? Yeah. Good man. Now, David, the crap commentary. Yes. What do you reckon? Uh, I think it was Piers Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan, of course it was Bronholm. That bit was easy, I think. Uh, in Die Another Day? Correct. Now, a lot of people were saying The Matador. Uh, yeah. so, and I think you were the only person calling who got, who got the right film. How did you deduce that, David? Mm. Well, he was talking about those, uh, those little booties and the, the <laughs> little ice. And I thought, well, he'd get cold feet, wouldn't he? So he'd need booties. What, so, what, while doing what? Standing on ice. Oh, standing on the ice, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? He was actually talking about the, the dreadful pre-credits surfing sequence. Do you remember that with the awful CGI? Well, it, it was all fairly awful, wasn't it? But, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, but that was uh, exciting info about the sunglasses. Did you realise that those were actually <laughs> his sunglasses? I hadn't realised that. No. I, I see the film in a different light now. Well, re-watch it with that in mind and, 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 yeah. You know, he's still got those sunglasses. Has he really? Yeah. He could sell them and they've been in the film. Well, I don't think he'd sell them because he, <laughs> he still needs them. He still wears them from yeah. time to time. <laughs> I, I thought about selling the glasses, but then I realised that I still needed them. Still needed, yes. <laughs> That's another little <laughs> nugget for you there. Well, thanks a lot for calling, David, and, and congratulations. It, it's very exciting. Yeah, uh, you're excited. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of a uh, prize would you would you like to go for? Do you want the tickets to see Jet or Richard Ashcroft, the mopey, big chinned uh, rock star? The, sp or, the spade faced man. <laughs> <laughs> or a copy of the Am Armando Armando what Armando <laughs> Iannucci shows. Uh I'm gonna go for the uh, the Armando Iannucci shows. That's what an intelligent man you are. Well done. Thank you. Um so that's it. What a what a what an excellent caller. Clever man, brilliantly executed quiz. It's all going very well. It's very professional. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. What are you up to this uh, rest of this weekend? I'm off on my holes. Where, Where are you, you going? going? I'm going to St David's. Oh, where's that then? That's in Pembrokeshire. Is it? Down in the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, you're very sensible to go on a British holiday. Everybody's doing it, not messing with uh, airports or any of that yeah. nonsense. No, absolutely Thank right. You, Quite right. Well, I, I hope the sun shines for you and you have a, a wonderful time watching your Armando Iannucci DVD. Oh, I can't wait.
It's a brilliant series, apparently. So thanks a lot for calling, David. Have a great weekend. Cheers, Andrew. Bye-bye. Tutty bye. This is, uh, <laughs> tutty bye. Yeah. This is Adam and Joe, uh, on XFM. We'll be back after the news and some music. XFM. <laughs> That's Razor Light within the morning. This is Adam and Joe here on XFM on a really miserable Saturday afternoon. I've got a bit of a cold. Morning, mate. Uh, it's not afternoon, morning. Is it? Yeah. Did I say afternoon? Yeah. Feels like the afternoon, though, doesn't it? No. We've been up for ages. Yeah. We've been up, like, two hours. Yeah, but we're perky. You know, upbeat. DJs, up radio yeah, DJs, yeah. perky, upbeat. Come on, remember. Morning. <laughs> well, hey! Hey, <laughs> I've got a cold. Yeah, so vibe. That's all right. Cold. Look, Xanthi's coughing. What do you take when you've got oh. a cold? I need a. I need something that's just going to stave off the symptoms for a week. I've got a busy week coming up. Right. What's good just to keep things at bay? You know, not a cure. Anybody? No. What medicinally? Yeah, anything. anything. Just a, just extra strength, extra strength anodin. Really? Yeah, a, a aspirin or something. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what I do when I'm feeling ill. What? I look at Alexa from Pop World. Does that perk you up? Yeah, I, I've got problems, listeners, with Alexa from Pop World. Because you love her. I just think there's, that she's just ab completely like the perfect woman. <laughs> she's so attractive. <laughs> what is there anything unattractive about Alexa from Pop World? And plus, listeners, Adam Buxton just told me she, she goes out. Is this indiscreet to say this? Maybe. It might be, but apparently she goes out with a considerably older man. Yeah. I mean, older than me. Quite a lot older than me. <laughs> You know? And how old is Alexa from Pop World? 22? Early one? 20s, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I, d I love her, the way she angles her feet in, like her toes pointing yeah. together. Yeah. I love her face. I love the fact that she looks a bit confused. <laughs> That's my perfect woman, slightly confused. And I, you know, I might develop some kind of psychopathic stalking thing for <laughs> Alex Zane. Yeah. Because he touches her. On a regular basis. During the links. I oh, know. And looks at her. I fancy Alex Zane. Do you? Yeah, he's wearing makeup in Pop World this Is week. Is he? Maybe we should do a kind of bisexual stalking thing. Mm-hmm. Double date. Uh, yeah, I'll do Alexa. You do I'll stalk Alex, Alex Zane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I honestly wouldn't mind a snog off Alex Zane. Really? He's a very attractive man. I wouldn't mind a snog off Alexa. I, you know, I wouldn't either, to be what honest. About, what about a kind of big, sexy Pop World... Snogger, snoggerama. Snog party. <laughs> Arms, legs everywhere, nobody knows what's what. I imagine... Suddenly all um, rules are thrown out the window. It's just pure love and bodies. I imagine people are, are feeling ill now. Listening to this yeah. disgusting description. Exactly. I'm feeling sexy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to play Lily Allen in a bit. Oh, that'll pour cold, cold water on that. Um, but, but hey, I've got a free play yeah. that, that connects to Lily Allen. Are we going to play my free play first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me get my nilts. Right, so my theory, listeners, I've got a theory about this. Um, Damon Auburn has a record label. It's called Honest John's. It's a sort of collaboration between him and a famous record shop called Honest John's. And they've released this brilliant compilation of Trinidadian Calypso. Basically, Calypso recorded by the first wave of Caribbean immigrants who came to London uh, in the 50s and 60s. And there's a track on, the, a, a great track on this compilation called London is the Place for Me, which we're about to play you. But my theory is that Lily Allen, Keith Allen, Damon Auburn, they're all kind of linked. I think Lily Allen might have heard this song and based her hit, London, around it, right? It's just spelled L... L-D-N. L-D-N. Yeah. London. So I think she might have basically based her single on this. So have a listen to this. This is Lord Kitchener. It's called London is the Place for Me, and it starts with... Uh, the Bells of Big Ben, done by a piano. And this is fantastic. Listen to this. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit scratchy because it was recorded in 1951. But, uh, you know, hold that in your mind and then listen to this Lily Allen track. And basically, she's just uh, done a new version of it. So uh, that was Lord Kitchener, right? And that's yeah. what's the compilation that's The from? compilation's called London is the Place for Me, which is also the name of that track. It's got some... I mean, it's a really great record. It's got a track about just being frightened of the underground. Oh, uh, yeah. You'd like it. Yeah. Uh, it's really good, and it's got a tr uh, uh, another track about cricket at Lords, uh, a track about being at the coronation. Oh, it's really good. That's a good idea. They could do a new compilation. Lily Allen and the streets and people like that. 
reflections on the modern London as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good idea. It's a brilliant idea, mm. isn't it, mm. that I mm. just came up with. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, here's Lily Allen. Way Space noises. Space. I love space. Courtesy of Lily Allen, that was, uh, Lidden, Lidden. LDN. Lidden. That's what they put on the baggage tags, right? Right. When you're at the airport. Hey, yeah. you uh, you flew to Scotland last weekend, right? That's correct, Adam. And, uh, and what was it like uh, travelling under the current circumstances? It was fine. It was really easy. Was it? Yeah, no, w no difference at all. But that might just be for internal flights. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's still a bit bad if you fly internationally. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, so Travel interesting. news. Interesting. Were you allowed to... Uh, yeah. Were you allowed to take uh, your water on board? Uh, no, I took no fluids. No fluids. On board. And did they give you lots but of water? But I'm suspicious of that. Yeah. I think it's just a, a way for BAA to make more money in their stupid shops. Selling people water? Yeah, because you're only allowed to take on board stuff you've bought in the shops. That's convenient, isn't it? Oh, really? Yeah. So you can take so water ladies, on board? So ladies who want to keep their complexions young, and what lady doesn't? Early signs of uh, wrinkles by your eyes. There. Boswell Ox. Boswell Ox. Um, ladies who want to keep their skin fresh on, on a dehydrating flight have to put their cosmetics in their, uh, you know... Check-in uh, check luggage. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they have to buy all new stuff at Duty Free and so smear it on. So if you buy it from the shops, you can you take, can take it, on it on It's just a scam. I reckon there's a conspiracy between the terrorists and the government. <laughs> <laughs> to raise more money on face cream. That's a very challenging yeah? theory. Mm. Now, I think I found the most boring book about rock and roll ever ever written. Do you ever read uh, rock books, Joe? No. Or music books? Sometimes. Um, and do you find them enjoyable, generally? If it's about someone I'm interested in, yes. Yeah, what's the best music book you ever read? Uh, the Marvin Gaye biography I thought was amazing. Oh, that was... What's his name, the guy who wrote that? I don't know, David something, can't remember. Uh, I remember the guy you mean. Yeah, that was supposed to be brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, one of the best ones I ever read was about Talking Heads. And uh, it's called Far, 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 or something like that. It's kind of pretentious, but it's enjoyable. And another brilliant one I read was in this series uh, that this book is from. It's called 33 and a Half is the series of books. And they're, I've mentioned them before on this show. They're like little pocket-sized books. And you can buy them in record shops and bookshops and stuff. And they're about so-called so classic albums, you know? The albums like... Can you, like, buy them on the counter at HMV sort of thing? I would think you probably could, mm. yeah. Uh, albums like uh, Harvest by Neil Young, uh, Grace by Jeff Buckley, Led Zeppelin, um, Low by David Bowie, London Calling by The Clash, Pet Sounds by The Beach Boys. All of them have had books written about them, you know? Yeah. And I read one about the Pixies' Doolittle, which was really, really good. It was fantastic, really enjoyable. But the one you've got in your hand is about OK Computer. Yeah, which is one of my favourite albums. You it's know? a whole book about, about one album. Yeah. And if you're a, a muso and a nerd and you're really in love with an album, it's nice just to wallow in lots of anecdotes and Details, discussions yeah. about the, the, how mm, the album mm. came together. And anyway, the guy who wrote this book... Di Griffiths is a professor in music in uh, Oxford, uh, some Oxford college, I believe, or maybe a right. Cambridge college. And um, he has taken a deliberately uh, studious approach to the whole thing. Very kind of... Read us a bit. Um, Are you going to read us a bit? He's head of the Department of Music at Oxford Brookes University. There you go. And I think he's, he immediately says in the beginning of the book... This isn't going to be just loads of anecdotes about the band and how the album came together. And you just think, oh no, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Instead, he takes the most clinical approach to music uh, that I've ever read in my life and simultaneously removes all the fun and enjoyment <laughs> that you get from an amazing album, which is what OK Computer is. Check this out. I might read you a few uh, bits of this throughout the show. Here we go. Uh, he's talking about... OK. Let Down, which is a track from the album, is fast, but doesn't necessarily sound fast. The pulse of the vocal line proceeds at double speed. Minims in the sheet music, fitter, happier, also sounds looser and freer than the speed indication suggests. The speed column isn't as technical as it may seem, the numbers indicating beats per minute. The slow section of Paranoid Android is just over 60 beats per minute, so that looking down at the second hand of the watch will show its pace. Let down is 2 to the second, and again the watch will show how lively that is. 
Electioneering is five beats per two seconds. Slower paced songs fill the time easier simply by working through their verses. Additional material will be found in the medium and quickly paced songs. And it goes on like that. It's not very interesting, for is it? pages and pages not and pages. I might pick out another bit for you a bit later on. Because it's just unbelievable. And I struggled right the way through the book, hoping that it would suddenly get interesting. But then it just takes more amazing turns into stupefying boredom. Might but you'll still read that. it, won't you? Yeah, I will. The whole thing. Yeah, I will read mm. the whole thing. Because mm. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's play some music and then uh, go to the ads. What... Have we got now? I think we've got some Morrissey, haven't we? If we're sticking to the playlist. No, we're we're jumping around a little what? bit. What? So, okay, this is the Vines. This is Don't Listen to the Radio. <laughs> Why, he's still talking and he's fading out. He had important things to say about his doorbell. No, he made his point. He's He's been thinking about the doorbell. But he got he's bored wondering of when, himself. When they're just... going to ring it, when they're going to ring it. Okay. He just, uh, he's been going on and on about the doorbell and the ringing. So listen, um, we want you folks to send in some ideas for lyrics for our cover, well, it's our version of, of Robbie Williams' Rude Box, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to remind you... We've already got quite a few uh, texts in. People are already responding, and we've got some quite high-quality stuff in. We're looking for rhyming couplets that involve fashionable phrases. You know, nothing too... Well, no, you can send in clever stuff, but well, we're not asking for, like, hugely sophisticated things. Stuff like, uh, what did I have? Xbox and something. What did I have? No, Xbox 360, flat-screen TV, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know? And the best thing is to combine something trivial with something quite serious. Like Robbie does, uh, what does he do Semtex with? Jurex. Yeah. Right? And Mandrex. Yeah, because it's kind of, um, you know, the modern world and a young person's uh, attitude to the modern world. You know, how can you discern between serious issues and trivial issues in this trivialized world? You know what? I woke up in the middle of the night. Mm. I want you to tell me I'm insane, right? You, you're insane. No, d tell me in a second. I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, what if Robbie is doing this deliberately uh, to be funny. Is this sh a song, a parody? Well, you can't tell, can you? I mean, you could sit, you could ask the same question about uh, the streets. Yeah. But the uh, streets, I mean, the streets is, it, it, it's wry, it's kind of street humour, isn't it? Yeah, but there's but, no doubt Robbie's trying to be, whether he's trying to be funny or not, he's trying to be cool. Yeah. He thinks it's cool. Do you that's, really think that's so? That's not in dispute. Yeah. Are you sure it's not just Robbie's, he's just, t um, you know, anti-cool, the whole thing? What, and you think the laugh's on us? Maybe. Maybe we're taking it too seriously. And you can't say, you're insane. Ro I'm insane. You're insane. Thank goodness, thank goodness <laughs> for that. See, that's what I wanted to uh, hear. You can't say that. You'll ruin our whole text competition. Well, I know. I just had to get it what off my mind. What are we going to do for the next one? Well, obviously <laughs> that's possible. It can't be possible. I want you to tell me I'm insane. Well, no, he's famously got a sense of humour. His dad's a red coat. Yeah. He's tongue-in-cheeky chappy Robbie Williams, isn't he? Yeah, but, but the key he thing, thing is, think does cool. he think it's cool? Yeah. Of course he thinks it's cool. Right, right. Yeah, he thinks he's got tood. <laughs> tood? Yeah, tood. Uh-huh. Well, that's okay, then. In okay, that... so, 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 right, we're continuing. We're not going to call off this text competition. No. Send in your rhyming couplets. We'll give a prize to the best one. And, in fact, we're going to construct our own version of uh, a, a Rude Box-esque song out of your fashionable rhyming couplets, right? And, yeah, and it doesn't have to be, like, fashionable in the sense of, sort of, um, you know, trends and fashion. It can, it can also be, it can also be just anything zeitgeisty, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything, sort of, newsworthy, craply modern yeah so text 83xfm with your crappy modern zeitgeisty rhyming couplets uh and after this record we're going to read out some of the best ones what we've got in now i've got a top a copy of one of my favorite albums one. a toppy a toppy i've got a copy of wireless by thomas dolby golden age of wireless um i'm not going to play she blinded me with science right because the version of that on here is one of the one, one of those ones where he's just yeah. remixed it for no reason yeah do you know what i mean you're talking to me specifically because nobody listening will know what you're talking about some people will remember thomas Dolby. <laughs> i'm going to ask you which which track uh, shall i play off here between europa and the pirate twins yeah. wind power yeah or um uh one of our submarines i'd play europa and the pirate twins europa and the pirate twins. yeah radio friendly it's a good story this it's a story song about a, a guy whose girlfriend becomes famous and he doesn't yeah, that's the end of the story. And it also used to be the theme music uh, for a, um, I think it was a Radio 1 show called Stu uh, B-15. Ah, that's exciting Fact news. Fans. <laughs> <laughs> you should write a book about it to sell on the counter at HMV. Maybe I will.
Um, oh no, I've got the wrong thing. Here we go, hang on. Everything's fine, everything's fine. Just... Come on, Phil. I can't. I think <laughs> silence is... Chris can't. Miles has built a career on silence. <laughs> you just so we're doing it as well. <laughs> Yeah, if if it can it. make Chris Miles a millionaire, we're doing it as well. Silence. <laughs> dead air. Dead air. Okay, we'll, we'll fill some Give dead us air a with, Sony. with Thomas Dolby. <laughs> that hasn't dated at all. There you go. That's Thomas Dolby with Europa and the Pirate Twins from the Golden Age of Wireless. And uh, this is Adam and Joe here on XFM. Yes, uh, hello. Um, now, are we going to read some some of the texts that have come in for our Robbie Williams song now, or shall we wait until after the ads? Let's wait until after the ads. Okay. And w when we'll have lots of um, them to read out to you. Bye-bye. That's Kasabian with Empire. This is Adam and Joe here on XFM on a Saturday afternoon. We're going to check out some of those texts now that we've got for our Robbie Williams uh, rhyme song thing. Yeah, we are. That's correct. What have we got there, Joe? Yeah, should we just explain what we're doing again in case anybody's just tuned in? Okay. We're just, uh, we've been asking you for your sort of fashionable zeitgeisty rhyming couplets because we're trying to create our own kind of version of Robbie Williams' new single, Rude Box, which is just a kind of, um, uh, what's the word, like a, like a swathe of trendy rhyming words. A smorgasbord. A smorgasbord of trendy rhyming words. And we've had some good ones in, okay? You ready for these? Come on, hit me. Blackberry... Watching telly, gimme an Emmy. It doesn't quite rhyme, does it? No. Berry, telly, like Emmy. She just sucked a lemon. I don't <laughs> like that. Remember, I, I did not write these. That came in anonymously. Okay, what about this? Gareth suggests rhyming Saddam Hussein with the generation game. Yeah. That's getting there, isn't it? Yeah. Opposites, rhyming opposites. You never usually associate those two. I mean, they're complete opposites. It would be good if the, if the generation game was still on, though. And it wasn't a... It is on challenge. Is it? Yeah. Okay. The Larry Grayson years yeah, are on challenge. It's very odd. But that's a different topic. Okay, <laughs> Katie from London uh, c uh, uh, suggests Bush say yo... This isn't very good, Katie. Bush <laughs> said yo, Blair gave him an asbo. That's quite good. Come on, it's that quite is good. good. Sorry, Katie, I damned you with faint praise. No, Katie's operating at Williams' level, you know? Yeah, she's right. She could do better than that, but she yeah. doesn't need to, because no. it's Williams. <laughs> okay, here's another anonymous one. We went out on penalties, like Brian Harvey on ten e's. My bleep smelt like strings of cheese, and my pants smell of Febreze. Um, over ambitious, maybe. That's pretty good, though. There's something good going on yeah, there. Yeah, we might use some of that. What now, was the what was the bleeped word? Uh, like a doorknob without the door. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> Uh, Wispy in Soho suggests rhyming slamming tequila with Al-Qaeda. That's very good. That's very good, isn't it? Yeah, you're well on the done, case, Wispy. Wispy. Tom suggests rhyming Israel, Lebanon, razor-thin, WAP, phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to... Let me just say that a bit differently. Israel, Lebanon, razor-thin, WAP, phone. Okay, yeah. Israel, Lebanon, raise a thin a wap phone. Yeah, Israel, Lebanon, raise a thin wap phone. That sounds that like could. an Adam and the Ants thing. Yeah, that could work. Because you can get away Lebanon. with bad rhyming if you in, in pop songs. There's a lot of bad raise rhyming in pop songs. Phone. But here's our favourite so far. It comes from Paul in Cambridge. He has this rhyming couplet. The Princess Diana Memorial Fountain is substantially gayer than Brokeback Mountain. That's very good. See, that's working on all levels. That even scans. Yeah. There's That's more. I'm going to go through the others and write down some more, but keep them coming in. 83XFM. Not only will we give a prize to the best, uh, it looks like the prize might be heading to Paul in Cambridge, unless someone can text in and better that, but we'll be constructing our own version of the song. We're even going to put music behind it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might not, you know, we reserve the right just to not do this and no, be lazy. We can't, we've got to do it, man. We've, we've got, got to, do, to it. do it. And then we might even release it, and we might even have a hit single. That that's the most unlikely, unlikely part yeah. of the whole thing, but I pretty much guarantee that we will wrap some of these lyrics that you're sending in pretty, towards the end of the show. Pretty much. Incidentally, we've got the X list coming up in about quarter of an hour in the final. Yeah, hour. you know we're not doing very well with the X list, listeners. It's an important uh, part of the XFM schedule, right? Where we play XFM classics, mm -hmm. but we haven't been doing it very well. So as of next week, 
I believe that the X list is is being taken out of our hands, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're going to do a two hour show, which secretly we're quite happy about because we can pack more in, you know, make our limited material sound more like, um, you know, timely and exciting, mm, like a delicious pie, instead of spreading it thinly over three hours. So next week's like show will Flora be more a... proactive. What? <laughs> So Spreading next week's show will be a two-hour show, and then you'll get something else happening with the X list, right? But hardcore music fans, people who maybe don't like chit-chat, uh, will be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas people who love our chit-chat will be able to uh, listen to us from, Everybody from 10 till noon. wins. Yeah. Free play right now. Here's The Fall from their last album, Fall Heads Roll. And this is a track called Breaking the Rules, which is a kind of enjoyably insane mess that sounds a little bit like Walk Like a Man. Do you remember the song that nope. Divine covered? Walk, Walk like, like an a Egyptian, man, I know. Talk like a man. Oh, Walk yeah. like a man, my son. And here's Mark Smith kind of dipping in and out of that uh, on this track. Breaking the rules. No. I oh, know it is. Ooh. Here we go. I've got it. I've got it. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Calm down. <laughs> I was talking about something else. What Xanthi, our assistant, thinks Barney is the sexiest <laughs> name that a man can possibly have. Hello, listeners. This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's 104.9. I like the name Barney. Our producer Xanthi thinks Barney is the sexiest man's name. And I was saying, I think Barney sounds like a, a idiot tough farmer or just a, like a, <laughs> a backwards yokel. <laughs> Hello, Barney. It's not a sexy name. <laughs> like, uh... Do your impression of Barney again? Barney. Hello. That's it. What have you been doing, Barney? I've been putting jam on my fingers and I've drawn a, a picture of a doorknob without the door. <laughs> what are you doing later? I'm going out with Xanthi. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks I'm sexy. She thinks my name is sexy. <laughs> I'm going to take her to the haystack and show her my model I made out of twigs of... Twigs, I'm just a model of twigs made out of twigs. <laughs> she thinks it's sexy. That sounds like your impression of that uh, chicken big brother. Yeah, oh, it probably is. That's What's the her only name? voice I do. I don't know. The one you were talking about that, that you said she was. Santi a... showed me half of one of her nipples. She said you were. You said that she was the. Um... <laughs> Tomorrow she's going to show me three quarters. <laughs> You know the Big Brother woman that you were talking about the other day. I don't know. No one remembers Big Brother. You said that she it evaporates Nikki. in your brain. Nikki. No, she's not West Country. Yeah, I know, but it, your impression was similar. Right, well, what, yeah. I think it might have gone a bit West. What was your Nikki impression? I don't know. I don't really know. I don't. But other people do better Nikki impressions. <laughs> I don't. She's just a screaming lunatic, isn't she? Yeah. Anyway, um, we've been asking for your rhyming couplets, but I haven't. That song was too short. I haven't had time to write any more down. Should what was play the another Storm record? Trooper one? I don't know, man. I'll have to go back and find it. Play another record. Um, I need more time. I haven't got a record lined up because it's almost time for the news. The news is coming up. But you see, I'm in a bit of a quandary now because I haven't got a song to play. Right. Um, but the news is, is isn't due just yet. Yeah. Uh, so in theory, we should we should. Uh, I've got a song. Talk. What have you got? Woodcat by Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Tongue are a very good sort of uh, folky band, mm. and they were one of the bands that played at the Green Man Festival that I went to uh, the weekend before last. And they're really good. And this is a song called Woodcat. I wouldn't get. Too and it's excited. got a lovely chorus <laughs> that just goes. Are we not going to play it? Well, I haven't got the CD. Am Where's I it gone? Uh, hang on. Is this it? Oh no, this is. That was last weekend. What's that doing there? That's Radiohead. Radiohead? We just had Radiohead. Why don't we get the news guy disaster. in early? We could... Ah, here we go. I found it. Okay. So um, this is a lovely track. It's called Woodcat. And uh, it's all about having a lovely time and getting up in the morning and lying in bed and watching the telly having coffee. Quite suitable, really. <laughs> Foo Fighters with a new way home. Hard to beat that for enjoyable shouting action. Uh, that kicks off our X List hour here on XFM on a Saturday afternoon with uh, myself, Adam Buxton. Yeah, that we've mishandled again. Why? We've what? mishandled it. We've forgotten to canvas requests completely. Oh, right. We haven't asked once. We're supposed to ask you no, to we send did. an we X List did. request. We did we do it once? We, we did. You once. did. You did. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but it could be one of the reasons why we, we won't be doing it next week. Fired from the X list. Yeah, actually, we weren't fired, listeners. We, we requested that we that maybe we, we could not do it. I was fired. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, listen, we've been uh, we've been asking for you to send in your suggestions for Robbie Williams style rhyming couplets, and I've just dropped uh, the piece of paper with them written on on the floor. Excuse me a second. Okay. Joe's just bending over for the piece of paper with the Robbie Williams rhyming couplets. I'm back. He's back. Okay. Um, and listen, just a bit of advice, uh, texters. But please put your number on your text, because a lot of these are very good, but they're anonymous. Not your number, your name. Put your name on your text. Yeah. Because it's nice to put a name to the couplet. Absolutely. Yeah? Okay, you ready for these, Adam? Yeah, hit me. Because you're going to judge these. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's the first one. You think I'm gay, but now I'm shouting. I'm so straight that I broke back mountain we can't have two broke back mountain ones in well we'll only use one i like the diana memorial like fountain the other one, don't you yeah but that's quite sophisticated do you, does it make sense to you you think i'm gay but now i'm shouting i'm so straight that i broke back it doesn't make any sense does it it's quite good there's something very good going on there yeah can't quite figure out what it is that's an anonymous one here's another anonymous one too much binge drinking not enough joined up thinking hey that's good. That could could have been said in the Houses of Parliament. That exactly right. And quoted in the papers. Tony B. Liar. That's very good. Here's another one, also anonymous. Happy slap, you gave me the clap, shut your trap. That's good. That's, That's quite good. basic. I would like to rhyme happy slap with something a bit more important, though. You know, like yeah, a world yeah, event of some yeah, kind. Yeah, addicted to crack. Yeah. Yeah, is that a world event? Well, no, no. The world's no. addicted to crack, I Adam. want something... Is the world addicted to crack? Is the world on crack? Wait a second, you're making me think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm starting to think. But, yeah, go on. It hurts. <laughs> Make me Here's stop. another one. You ready for another one? Yeah, go on. This is quite a good one. This is anonymous as well. Arctic monkeys. Uh -huh. Tony's flunkies. Very good. Telling yeah. lies. <laughs> <laughs> Pentapeptides. That's good. In collusion with Gillette Fusion. Whoa. That's really good. That is who good. sent that in? Text us your name, the person who sent that in. Pentapeptides. <laughs> Telling lies. Pentape Tony's flunkies. Flunkies is a brilliant word that is only ever used in when people are talking about politics. Uh -huh. Like, no one ever uses that in any other context. Well, very rarely. Flunkies. Flunkies. Tony's flunkies. Any Omega-3 <laughs> stuff there? No Omega-3 yet. That's a good tip. You'll, yeah. get, you'll get in Adam's good books if you send in an Omega-3 related one. Here's another one. Again, this is anonymous. Prime Minister Blair, get out of my hair. Bush has got you dancing like Fred Astaire. Arnie's in the White House, shooting and singing, because he'll be back. They've already started filming. It should be flimming, because that doesn't <laughs> rhyme with singing. That's a bit of a confusing <laughs> one. It started well, though. Yeah, it started Tony well. Tony Blair, get out of my hair. Minging. Bush has got you dancing like Fred Astaire. We might use the top of that. Something minging at the end. Yeah, Arnie's not in the White House. He's gov governor of California. That doesn't mean he's, He visits uh, the White House on visits, a regular basis, yeah, that's I true. imagine. Okay, here's another one. You might like this one. This is another anonymous one. This is just random rhyming words. Actimel. Uh-huh. Belly swell. Yeah. Need to, to, need to chew a Remy gel. Does a Remy gel... Is that how you say it? Remy gel? I don't know. Let's Remy just... Gel? Let's just, uh... Move swiftly. Yeah, because it's one. like a remedy, isn't it? Remedy yeah, gel. Rem remedy gel. That's anonymous. Here's one that actually comes from someone who's uh, brave enough to declare their name. They're the Peckham Cartel. Oh, my goodness. This, a cartel? Yeah, I think they might have done a shooting around my way last night. <laughs> right. Street was cordoned off. Uh, here we go. It's Burberry caps with a price tag. Mm -hmm. Heavy shelling of Baghdad. Jody Marsh is a slag. Nice. Smuggled Poles. I guess he means Polish people. Yeah. In a bag. That is brilliant. That's good, isn't it? The Peckham Cartel. The Peckham Cartel have nailed it. They've nailed it. Is that the best so far? There's more. Do you want more? That's really good. Uh, Do you want a record, then some more? Yeah, let's Keep have Keep texting more. them in, listeners. 83XFM, and we're going to construct a rude box style stupid contemporary rap song out of we, these. Because we better start constructing, you know? Maybe we'll play a couple of songs Ooh. in a row now. And we, we, we better start constructing the rap, because we're going to do this rapping at about 22. Okay, so this is your last chance to get your suggestions in. Uh, text 83XFM and do put your name in because when we give away the prizes we need to, uh, you know, call you and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's Radiohead once again. This was requested by Darren in Wakefield. <laughs> no, it's not Radiohead. What are you doing? I don't know. I feel ill. I've got a cold. Yeah, but your fit hands aren't ill. I've got a cold What's and my brain on? and my hands are failing to connect. And my brain's connected to Well, my it's feet. testing our DJ abilities to their limits. Well, that's true, technically. But listen, I have to... I know I don't say anything of any value, but I have to talk and press all the I buttons. I know, I know, but that was your choice, you know. Let's play it. Let, what's the record? Have uh, we got, is it sorted out now? It's Granddaddy. 
and uh, you might know this is the theme. Okay, man, and Adam, I'm to, very sympathetic. To I'm not Charlie attacking Brooker's, you. No, I, think, I know. I think yeah. everybody loves you and, and wishes you the best in your <laughs> DJing career. <laughs> Great. Yeah, this is uh, also the theme to Charlie Brooker's Screen Wipe. It's called AM 180, and it's by Granddaddy. <laughs> There you go. That's the Strokes with Hard to Explain. This is Adam and Joe here on uh, XFM. Yes, still uh, canvassing your Robbie Williams-style rhyming couplets. Do you want to hear some more, Adam? Buxton? Yeah, we should wrap this up, shouldn't we? Because we've got to write the rap. I mean, okay, we've we so got to pull all a... these together and do some rapping at this the end of the show. This is our final reading session. Uh, what was going on on the phones there, Xanthi? Sorry, I've got the Peg and Cartel on the line. Are they actually on the line right now? They are, yeah. Okay, they're, they're our winners, so let's get them on the line. They can join in this link. How many of them are there? In a, how many people are there in a cartel? Hundreds. Well, there's, there's about eight of us in the cartel. Really? You sound like a terribly posh cartel. <laughs> we, we're a terribly, terribly posh cartel. Well, what's your name, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor? Uh, uh, my name's David, um, but I, I don't feel like I could speak for the whole cartel. Right, you, you, you can't speak for the whole cartel, no, they've got minds of their own. And can you tell your friends not to be silly in the background? They're bringing the <laughs> reputation of your cartel down. Hello? No, no, no they're, they're ten, ten radio. Yeah, right. Um, what, <laughs> what do we want to say to the Peckham Cartel? That they've won. You've won. Well done, Peckham Cartel. You've won. Our competition, I can't find... Oh, no, where's your thing that you wrote? Yeah, here we are. Hold on a second. Can you remember it? Yes. Peckham well, Cartel. To be honest, we were, we were writing one about um, kids who make eBay bids um, with, uh, to well, I think oh. with murderous intent. We're losing the cartel. There's snatches of topical stuff coming through there. <laughs> are you in? Are you in Baghdad, Peckham Cartel? We are actually no Peckham is like Baghdad. It is, but, isn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, the, the shells are more, um, you know, like seashells. Light. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, congratulations, you guys. Now, what are we going to give them as a prize? Well, there's eight of them. So, how many more DVDs have we got left? Mm, we haven't got eight. We've got four. And Adam wants to. You want one? I'm going to nick one. Yeah, yeah. So we've got three. Uh, are you interested in a band called Jet at the Carling Academy, Tuesday the 7th of November, Peckham Cartel? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We'd, we'd love free things. Okay. <laughs> and what about, we could send them all the tickets, the Richard Ashcroft tickets as well. Yeah? Yeah. We'll send them all the tickets. And you can share them out amongst the cartel. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, well done, and thanks for listening. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, you guys, for uh, sending yeah. Let's remind people of what they, they wrote for us again. Okay, let's... When should we do that? <laughs> when, when do you fancy doing that? Now? Okay, let's do it now. Burberry caps with a price tag. Heavy shelling of Baghdad. Jody Marsh is a slag. <laughs> Smuggled Polish people in a bag. That's good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's going to be one of the rhyming couplets in our Robbie rap, which is uh, coming up quite shortly. We're going to have to take some time out to actually formulate it now. Yeah, do you want to hear the others that have come in? Yeah. No baggage to Baghdad. No cheap holes for me dad to dad. <laughs> <laughs> but that's from Chris M. That's quite good, you know, package holidays. Chris and Morris. It could be Chris Morris. Yes, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's classic oh. Morris. Uh, how about this one from John? Yeah. All I see is Starbucks. John Prescott looks like Uncle Buck. Nice. Mm. And Cherie needs a nip and tuck. Hey. Hey, that's good, John. Very topical, Very, yeah, very satirical. Yeah. <laughs> Cherie put on a bit of white. Starbucks, they're <laughs> everywhere, aren't they? Uh, here's really another cool one from Anonymous. There's hoodies on the street, but no bobbies on the beat. There's Polish... Pe people have got it in for Polish people. There's a lot of them. There's, there's <laughs> Polish... But I, it, you know what? It sounds a tiny bit racist just to use the word Polish. Uh, so I'm going to put in the word people after it to give them some dignity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're human beings with equal rights. They're very, there's very a, good people. There's a lot of anti Lovely people. Polish racism. Yeah, but not from me, around. not from you, and not from XFM. No, we don't want to encourage it. No, that's rubs. There's hoodies on the street, but no bobbies on the beat. There's Polish people eating sausages and pigeons with no feet. You see, that's quite a good one, isn't it? Pigeons with no feet, that's a good observation. Why haven't they got feet? Well, because they're all mutilated. Well, who's all been the pigeon mutilating pigeons? You. I don't know, all the pigeons in London are all scraggy and mutated. I've never seen a pigeon I've with no feet. I've seen lots of one-legged pigeons. That's look, Xanthes, you don't get out enough, man. You're on your bike. You don't, st take it t you don't take the time to stop and look around at pigeons' feet. They're just hobbling around on stumps. Yeah. That's often. grotesque. Some of them are... He I've seen headless pigeons. No, you have Walking haven't. around, eating with their bums. I, w I believed you for a second. Right? <laughs> I was thinking, a headless pigeon? I don't understand how that could work. <laughs> oh, there's nothing sadder than a footless pigeon. Anyway, that's really good, Anonymous. I wish you'd put your name on it. Here's another one from Emily in Whitechapel. We're all at home. Oh, did I do this one already? They eat with their bums. <laughs> well, if you, ain't, if you haven't got a head, that's all you can do, isn't it? You just have to reverse the process. With their bum teeth. Yeah. Their muscles. Bum beaks. 
yeah. <laughs> Emily and Whitechapel, we're all at home watching Big Brother. There's a boy in Iraq just lost his mother. We're all at home watching X Factor. There's questions about Iran's nuclear reactor. Emily and Whitechapel, that's almost too strong. That is... That's made that, Xanthi look depressed. That's kind of serious, Emily and Whitechapel. She's having to think about a man called Barney. <laughs> to <cheer herself> up. <laughs> That is, that's a good rhyming couplet, but that's just serious, you know? That is quite depressing. We're depressed now, Emily. That's Chappell. just what a good point. Okay, here's another one from Marek. Can't you see... Oh, no, that's not very good. Why did I write that down? Can't you see I'm out of on that Omega-3? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Sorry, I've wasted everyone's time with that one. Can't you see I'm out uh, of it on Omega-3? Maybe that's it, yeah, from Marek. That's not bad. Can you get high on Omega-3? If you eat enough, Probably, yeah. you're just so brainy that it's like... If you snort Omega-3... Uh, this is from... Uh, do you want more? So yeah. A couple more. <laughs> Tiny bit more. <laughs> this is from Danny. I'm the one in four that's obese. All I want is cakes and peace. I'm going out tonight, dressed in lycra, cruising for ladies in my Nissan Micra. Now, he didn't write ladies. He wrote a ruder word that also applies to kittens. <laughs> <laughs> but I put the word ladies in. But that's quite good, isn't it? Sandy's I'm the one in four that's that. obese. All I want is cakes and peace. I'm going out tonight, dressed in lycra, cruising for kitties in my <laughs> Nissan Micra. Very good. Thank How you. How about this one? Wait, wait, wait. Oh Mark, Mark in Chesham. Kids in Africa ain't got no grub. I read about it wirelessly on my BT hub. That's really good. That's good. Anyway, we haven't got any more time. No, I think we should play some more music and, uh, and you know, we've got to rehearse. We've got to work on this rap, yeah. So we might just play ten songs in a row while we work on our rap. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, music. Here we go. Enjoy this one from... Yeah, is it? The oh. Bees. That's Royksop with Epile. Before the break, you heard, of course, uh, James, James Hendrix with Voodoo Chili. Voodoo Child. Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on XFM. It's the final quarter of an hour of uh, another extraordinary... Uh, it's been extraordinary. ...award-winning show. Mm. And, um... I should say, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll do that a bit later, but it's it's time now for our Robbie Williams Rude Box Rap. Wow. Constructed entirely from suggestions... Sent in by listeners, yes. Sent in by listeners for kind of up-to-the-minute topical rap stuff. Oh, I need to do a wee. I need to do a wee as well. Really? Maybe it'll give us an extra edge. No. Yeah, what, no. you mean being desperate to, to yeah, wee? Yeah, 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 yeah. Possibly. I've heard that Robbie actually, he never wees really? before a gig. Yeah, he really? goes on there absolutely busting. Really? Yeah. Busting busting so right the way through he gives it his all you know and then he just pees for about an hour and a half really after a gig it's yeah amazing it's extraordinary That's amazing. so how are you feeling man are you uh have you got your couplets well obviously there? i'm nervous but uh, also I'm, I'm street so i don't care you're street uh, oh, that's interesting how uh, are you feeling <laughs> not very not very good i'm i'm um not such a good rapper really so do you, are you gonna go first on the rapping no you're gonna go first oh, no, but I'm listen i tell first. you what we'll uh, play a little bit of the are we gonna play a little bit of the original track by robbie yeah to the root box shake your root box to the root box shake your you're getting into the groove yeah uh. gotta get his voice right his voice sounds a bit like... Okay, then, back to basics, grab your... Okay, then, back to basics. Okay, I think we're ready. Uh, did he just say something rude? No. No, no, that's I misheard the, it. That's the radio edit. Okay. He can't say anything rude in the radio edit. Okay, then, let's do this rap. <laughs> Play the record, stop okay, talking then. K rap. Here we go. We uh, haven't started, that was improvised. Wow, <laughs> that's that's freestyling. Amazing. Right, kick it off, Eddie B. Here we go. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. My bum smelt like strings of cheese, but it's okay because my pants smell of Febreze. Check out a band on a MySpace website. Finish up your drink because you can't take it on the flight. All I see is Starbucks. John Prescott looks like Uncle Buck. Oh dear, my lyrics do not fit. I think my rapping bit will not be very good. <laughs> you take over Adam Buxton quickly because I've made a complete chuckston. Arctic monkeys, Tonys, flunkies, kids getting fat, Jamie Oliver junkies. Happy meal, happy slap, politicians talking crap, Princess Diana, memorial fountain, substantially gayer than Brokeback Mountain. That's Thanks, Paul in Cambridge. There's hoodies on the street, but no bobbies on the beat. There's Polish eating sausages and pigeons with no feet. We're all at home watching Big Brother. There's a boy in a rap just lost his mother. We're all at home watching X Factor. There's questions about Iran's nuclear reactor. 
Wow. Thanks. <laughs> have you got more? <laughs> yes. Go on. I have. Are you willing I'll to be doing them in a second? No. Okay. You ready? Slamming tequila wait, 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 with Al Qaeda, Israel, Lebanon, raise a thing. Wow. For what? I'm the one in four. That's a beast. All I want is cakes and peace. I'm not going out tonight dressed in lycra, cruising for kitties in my Nissan Micra. I am going out. I don't know why I said not. I am going out. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you do some quickly. I've run out. <laughs> what? I'll give you some more. Hey, uh, okay, how about this? <laughs> Bush and Blair blatantly lied, like art is a cow in formaldehyde. I'd like to take President Mugabe to Nobu for sushi with wasabi. After eights, after dark, stabbings all up in a local park. All aboard the Cutty Sark. Hezbollah's bike meets Israel's bark. Wee! <laughs> I've got more. <laughs> <laughs> more uh, no there can't be more people will go mad that's uh take their own lives yeah there we go you know we're gonna work on that and polish it up and then we'll split the royalties we've made a record of everybody's cell phone number who uh contributed uh texts that it will soon hit number one we're gonna get our friend ozumisu to help us do the uh, backing track to it we're all gonna be rich every single listener to this show who and we contributed should, is gonna be rich we should do a video for it and put it up on uh, youtube as well yeah it's all gonna it's all gonna go off so if you contributed lyrics to that, then take out a major loan and spend it, because you're going to be in the money. You're going to be rolling around in big piles of cash. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, my son Frank is listening today, I think, and uh, he, he asked if I would say hello to him. So, Frank, hi, how are you doing? Hey, Frank. Um, hope you're having a good time. I'm going to see you very shortly. Does um, he want me to say hello to him? Yeah, 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 you say hello yeah. as well. Hello, Frank. It's Joe. And uh, Uncle Dave is coming over this afternoon, Frank, so that's exciting. Haven't seen Uncle Dave for a while. No. Uh, here's a track that Uncle just Dave... got out the clink. <laughs> 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 for that job he done. For that job. <laughs> so, Frank, I uh, hope you like this one. This is also going out to Barney. This is a Barney, so it's exciting for Xanthi as well. And it's uh, Talking Heads. <laughs> The Talking Heads with Psycho Killer. Uh, you've been listening to Adam and Joe. We'll be back here on XFM from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the same time next week. Thanks very much for listening, texting, emailing. Um, and there may not be a podcast next uh, week. What? If you're a podcast fan. Although I noticed the podcast has been slipping a little bit in the charts. Yes, yeah, been overtaken by our Coca-Cola New Music podcast. Yeah, that's sort of outrageous, isn't it? We spend almost no time preparing for that one. And the one we put all the effort into has plummeted down the plummeted. charts to number 14. Is it 14 now? It was 14 uh, the last time I looked. And I look every three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're sort of obsessed yeah. by the progress of If the you podcast. like the show, and, you know, the podcast has stuff that uh, isn't in the radio show. It's, you know, it's it's more polished than the radio show. Having you, said that, the one that, that we... It is, it is more polished, yeah. It's a bit mm. more deliberate. <laughs> it's a bit less yeah. ramshackle. Having said that, the one that we put out last night... Um, is a bit of a stinker. Is, it's a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a weird It's one. us going off on one about Colin Farrell. Well, and, that's always good for a And his films. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit negative. I woke up in the middle of the night when I was worrying about Robbie being ironic. Yeah. I you worry too much, I man. know, I do a lot of worrying. It's because I've got a cold. I always worry when I've got a cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, anyway, so download the podcast. You can download it at iTunes or xfm.co.uk. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, here's one final uh, free play right now. This one wasn't requested by anyone, but I'm going to play it um, for for anyone who likes the fine young cannibals. Nobody likes the fine young cannibals. So Everybody does. I, I dare Everybody you does. not to enjoy this. This is one of the tracks that's dated really well for Which me. Which one is it? Is it? Ba -ding 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 -ding. No, one. no. I'm no. not the man I used to be. Yeah, it's the one. De -de -de yeah, oh, you, is that what you yeah, were doing? Yeah. Oh, you play sorry. It. You'll hear that noise. Else. Yeah. Oh, I know the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. very good. Come on. You've got to like this. Thanks for listening. Anyway, we'll we'll uh, see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Love you. Bye.